Today I am going to explain fluid mechanics. <clears throat> so before going to learn about fluid mechanics, uh, first of all, in our nature, materials are classified into two types. That is, first one is in the form of solid and the second one is in the form of fluid. These solids are <clears throat> classified into three types. Generally, one is elastic material, plastic material and rigid material. On these materials, we are applying different types of forces, that is tensile force. Second one is compressive force. And third one is bending force. And fourth one is shear force. And last one is twisting force. These are the forces we are applying on solids. By the application of these forces, uh, we have to calculate only two values in our strength of material. That is, what is the value of stress and what is the value of strain. If you know what is the value of stress and strain, then we can relate the stress and strain according to Hooke's law. This is named as solid mechanics or <clears throat> strength of material. And in case of fluids, the fluids are basically classified into two types. That is, first one is in the form of a liquid and the second one is in the form of gas. The liquids are also named as incompressible and gas are named as compressible. <clears throat> Now, why liquids are named as incompressed and gas are named as compressible fluid? I am going to give one a simple reason why it is called incompressed, why it is called compressible fluid. One is, first reason is, for example, if you take a small <coughs> vessel or a cylinder which is fitted with a piston which is having some quantity of liquid or gas. By applying the compressive force in this direction on the liquid or gas, then the change in volume of the liquid and change in volume of the gas, if you compare it, the change in volume of the liquid is very, 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 very less when compared to gas. So that the liquids are named as incompressed because the change in volume is not considered. The change in volume is very, very less when compared to gases. So that the liquids are named as incompressed and gas are named as compressible fluids. And another one, <coughs> we can <coughs> define this liquid and gas like this. And density of the liquid is constant and uh, density of the gas is not constant. That means the density of the any fluid is constant, it is belongs to incompressible and density is not constant, it is named as compressible. So we can define this liquid and gases in two ways, in terms of volume and in terms of density. So in case of water, uh, in case of liquids, that water density is 1000 kg per meter cube, all of you know it. <clears throat> the density is varies from 0 degrees to 100 degrees centigrade but this variation of density is very, very less in, in case of liquids, but variation of density in gases is more, so that we are going to neglect the variation of density in case of liquids, and we are going to consider variation of density in case of gases, so that the liquids are named as incompressed and gases are named as compressible. But practically, the liquids and gases must be compressed, but the compressibility of liquids is very, very less when compared to gases, so the fluids are two types, liquids and gases, and it is also named as incompressed, it is also named as compressible fluids. 
on these fluids we have to apply different types of forces that is <coughs> first one is gravity force that is fg that is named as gravity force and second one is we are going to apply pressure force and third one is viscous force next one is compressibility force next one is turbulence force and the next one is surface tensional force these are the forces on the fluids whether it is in the form of liquid or whether it is in the form of gas one is pressure gravity viscous compressibility turbulence and surface tension by the application of these forces in our fluid mechanics we are going to calculate three variables <clears throat> first one is measurement of pressure that is the first variable and the second variable we are going to measure velocity of a fluid after finding the velocity we can collect it easily what is its acceleration that is change in velocity with respect to time then we can get acceleration the differentiation of velocity with respect to time we can get acceleration after finding the velocity and acceleration then we can find the force according to newton's second law f is equal to m f is equal to m a by using this formula we can calculate how much force is acting on a fluid by using newton's second law <coughs> we can calculate it so by the calculation of for pressure velocity and force after that we are going to find what is the value of work and what is the value of power and what is the value of efficiency so these are the values we are going to find after knowing the measurement of pressure measurement of velocity measurement of force then we can get how to find work energy how to find power and how to find efficiency now the entire fluid mechanics uh, in a <coughs> sequence form i will give it to you first one we have to find pressure the second one we have to find velocity and third one we have to find force and fourth we have to find energy after that we have to find energy per second that is named as power after that we have to find efficiency of a system now the analysis of the pressure velocity force is named as fm that is fluid mechanics and analysis of energy power efficiency is named as hydraulic machines that is what is the calculation of pressure velocity force if you know it if you write the relation between pressure velocity and force we can get three equations one is continuity equation one is bernoulli's equation one is impulse momentum equation if you know these three equations i am going to apply these three equations on a any device then we can get energy power and efficiency that's why i am taking this one is application of the pressure velocity forces equations on the any device then we can find energy power and efficiency of a system now <clears throat> basically <clears throat> this fluid mechanics is classified into three types that is first one is named as statics and the second one is kinematics and the third one is dynamics 
The statics means the fluid is said to be under rest and its velocity becomes zero. It is under rest. And in kinematics, uh, it is velocity is not equal to zero. That means it having some velocity. That means the fluid is said to be under motion. And in dynamics also, velocity is not equal to zero and the fluid is also said to be under motion. But in case of kinematics, we are not to consider what are the forces acting on the fluid, but we have to consider by the application of that force, what is the flow of the fluid we have. There are different types of flow. I will give you the explanation later. That is study flow, on study. There are different types of flows are there. But here, without consideration of, without <coughs> consideration of forces. Here, consideration of forces. This is the classification of fluid mechanics. Now here, <coughs> what is the definition of statics means? Statics is defined as study of fluids which are in rest, which are in rest. Second one, kinematics, study of fluids, which are in motion without consideration of, without taking of forces. <clears throat> Our next one is dynamics, study of fluids which are in motion with a consideration of forces. This is the classification of fluid mechanics.